All right, welcome back to the shop. I just want to do a quick video on how I am repairing a typical issue when you buy or take the chance of buying something off Craigslist from somebody you don't, you know, not everyone is honest out there and some people don't know that you know, maybe their guitar is not playing right and they sell it, but if it, if it stops playing correctly or setting up correctly because the truss rod no longer works, uh, such is the case with this, this is an Epiphone dot and it's kind of like the Gibson uh, 335 or ES 335 or like the uh, Epiphone Casino. It's like the hollow body, really, really sharp guitar. Uh, but anyway, this uh, gentleman brought it to my shop to get set up. And of course, you know, it was buzzing. It wasn't playing right. And what happens sometimes is you go to adjust the truss rod. Like in this case, we needed to put, we needed to put more of a, of more relief or more of a dip in the neck because uh, it was too straight or it had what was called a back bow to it and uh, when I took the cover off and a lot of you guys know that's what this you know this little cover right here just covers up that truss rod hole and you put the wrench in there and you go to loosen it up and in this case it was completely as loose as it could possibly be and you got to be sure that uh, let me grab a wrench real quick um, let's say let's say you are let's say you're adjusting this truss rod okay you go in there and you have it all set up and, you, and you're you're going to loosen it now you you loosen the truss rod as much as you can and then once you feel all the tension gone keep going and if it starts to grab again, like it starts to feel like it's tightening up, then you have what's called a two-way truss rod. So it would actually bend the neck back uh, the way you're wanting it to go. So those are great to have, but a lot of guitars don't have those. And unfortunately, this one doesn't either. So in this case, I want to loosen the truss rod up to get the proper relief in this neck. And it's basically spun off or there's no tension whatsoever. And even at doing, even after loosening it completely to that level, it had, uh, it basically had less than two thousandths of an inch relief, which is unacceptable and it would never really play right. So that's why you got to be careful when you're buying a guitar. It's kind of hard to do that when you're on the spot, but it's the risk you take when you're out there. And then it's also the risk you take of not buying it from a retailer where they have a return policy. Okay. So what I've done to repair this before you throw it away, uh, this is definitely worth a try. It doesn't always work, but it does work uh, the majority of the time, especially when it's this minor. Like this one did have some relief, two thousandths of an inch is at least some. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's at least some. Uh, and we need to get it up to between, I like between at least 9,000 to 10, or nine to 11 thousandths of an inch. So we needed to add quite a bit of relief to it. So what I did is I put it on the bench and I have, this is called a sunbeam. It's a, uh, like if you injured your arm or your ankle, some place, you know, some uh, thinner area of your body and you needed a, a pretty, uh, a nice uh, hot wrap on it. This one has three, three settings. It has low, medium, and high. And the, the high actually gets pretty hot and it runs continuously for two hours. So what I did is, and this is very important, um, before you start doing the iron trick and there's all kinds of ways you can do it out there, make sure that you're, you're planning for success. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work and it already has started to work. I've already tested it, but make sure you put the same gauge or at least close at least do it uh, the wound strings if you notice all of these are the, the wound thicker strings I mean I think the lowest gauge I have on there is a 32 gauge string so they're from 42 to 32 and this is a good good time to use your old look at these corroded crap strings but they're serving a purpose which is you put all of the uh, the six strings on there that uh, are similar in the diameter because you want to put equal tension on this neck. 
when I had the original set of strings on there I just kind of let it sit without heat for about a week and I just tuned everything up uh, big time and all I did was you, you could tell that these like the low E string or the high E string that was like a, maybe a 10 or an 11 gauge string it wasn't putting that kind of pressure on the neck so you might end up putting a twist in it you know you might have by by tuning these up probably two full steps I mean I got these things cranked uh, I've actually had a couple of them snap on me that's how cranked they are but nonetheless uh, if you think about it these strings here if you left it with a standard set these three would be thicker and these would be a lot thinner and the amount of force that's pulling you know this direction on those tuners and down here on the bridge you want that you know you can't have that offset or else you're gonna get a, a kind of a, a twist to the neck you know if it's pulling this side more you're gonna end up compounding and making a bigger problem than just having a neck that doesn't adjust or has the proper relief so it's very important put at least the like stick to the wound strings do your thicker ones on the outside so you have nice even pull you know thinner if you have them or if not at least do all wound strings because they can take that uh, tension and uh, really crank it up and the way to test there's no way to do it like a tone test or anything like that but take your finger and feel the resistance and as soon as you feel the resistance that's a little bit different tighten them up to feel about the same it's it's a great uh, a great way to do it because um, a perfect example is I had the three um, these are the three original strings that were on the guitar and I took off this E, B, and G string. I took those completely off, but I did them one at a time. So when I popped this E string, this one actually broke under tension, I put this uh, 42, 42 gauge uh, low E string down here on the high end, and I strung it up. And when I did, as soon as I brought that up to tension to feel like when this one felt like this one over here, when they felt the same, this, these two strings loosen tremendously. Like you, you could you could feel the relief that it took off of the off of these strings. So that is extremely important, and that that's how I know it's also the right way to uh, address this situation. So I'm going to leave it here. Uh, it goes in two-hour increments. I'm going to run the heat on it for at least I'm going to say two to three days. I know it might sound like overkill, but uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to work out going to actually fix this guitar not only is it going to set up properly but it, I believe it's going to be fixed for life because once we heat this thing up and this thing gets pretty pretty hot to the touch uh, I mean it's not insane but I know for a fact it's enough heat to alter those wood fibers which is what we want heat will do that we're purposely warping this neck the other way we're doing it in a straight fashion because we have equal tension and then after that's done I am going to let it cool under string tension. That is that is huge in this case, especially when you have one that's kind of acting up like this. If it's got a natural bend to the wood, you want to keep that thing under string tension at all time. And I'm, I'm a betting man, and I'm going to do an update to the video that uh, after uh, a week of this treatment that I'm doing, that this guitar will not only set up properly, but it'll be fixed for good. I think I'm going to have to use the truss rod in the opposite direction to actually tighten it to take out some of the relief. And uh, I know I've said it a million times, make sure you have the same strings all the way across. That way you put an equal tension on this neck because it's not a removable one. All right, this is a, uh, it's a glue in, it's a glued in neck. So a really nice guitar. It's going to live to play another day and, uh, little craigslist bandit it's not going to affect this customer of mine so we're going to get this thing fixed so hopefully this helps and i will post an update soon on the, the actual ending results thanks for stopping by guys